things today. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Okay. Good morning, all. Uh, pleased to be here. Thanks for the invite from Ralph. There we go. There we go. Uh, but I know we're conscious of time. We're running a little late. So um, without further ado, I will get into my presentation. Uh, I'm going to speak today about digitizing project delivery in aviation. Um, hopefully you'll see from some of my background why I selected aviation as something to focus on. I think we've heard a lot today about the city information modeling, smart cities, etc. Uh, the reason I like airports specifically, one, I used to, used to work for one, so I'm very familiar with the digitalization process in airports. I, I led the digital transformation at London Gatwick Airport for a number of years. Uh, specifically in the AEC space for the project delivery, the transition into operations, uh, and then the master planning as that journey or that life cycle comes back round. During my time there, I implemented a common data environment, a connected data platform, um, and that's a space that they still utilize today. Um, they engage with their framework suppliers, uh, additional suppliers that they work with project to project. And they have a robust set of uh, requirements, a robust set of processes, documentation and standards that make living the process for the supply chain, the ecosystem, efficient. But it also allows the airport to gain information from their projects in a very cohesive manner. Um, and so really, how do you start with this? And I, I think the key is to begin with the end in mind. I was using an analogy last night um, with some friends, and I said, you know, when you go and take a taxi, if you don't tell your driver where you want to go, how can you be upset when they don't tell, take you to the place in which you expected to arrive? And so with that, you know, there is an expectation that owners want what is on the right-hand side of the screen. They want an intelligent building, an intelligent facility that can run a lot of autonomy uh, and reduce the manual interactions from the airport staff. But often what they were receiving was PDFs, paper-based documentation. And I think this is just a miscommunication at the outset as we go to set the expectations before we endeavor on a journey together. And so what we're seeing in the industry, I and mean, you could really rewrite these challenges for airports, for rail, for any other major infrastructure, transportation, but we have challenges um, with our workflows. So we don't have a good um, collaboration space for these various disciplines, for the owner to integrate. In the US now, we're seeing a lot around progressive design and build, taking the client and the owner on a journey. Um, we start with a set of requirements. We build relationships. We have to interact and interface with people. And our geometry and our data also need to interact with one another. We also have challenges around locational awareness. This is paramount in airports. They're miniature cities. We have multiple projects going on at any one time. And someone needs to control the interface of that. Someone needs to ensure that we're working in the right time, space, location. And then we also have a growing project complexity. We're no longer building tin sheds. We're building highly sophisticated buildings with a lot of mechanical, electrical and plumbing systems run through them. This is both above ground, below ground. When we talk about airports, we have runways, we have ground lighting, we have control towers, and all of these components need to play together in a nice space. And so how do we get there? Well, we begin with the end in mind. We need to start to decide where it is we want to go and how we want to get there. And we need to start to describe who has what responsibility in this delivery cycle. Now, you can kind of see here that we need to start laying the right foundations. We need to take what we did yesterday. We need to digitize that. We need to build on that. And we need to start to embed data onto our geometry. If we just have pretty pictures, it's very hard to build, very hard to quantify. And actually, as we get into operations, it's very hard to manage pretty pictures. What we end up in operations is managing our data and using the pictures, the graphics, the geometry to visualize how we are going to maintain and manage the facility. Um, 
So hopefully, there we go. So I just wanted to quickly run through kind of how information management is deemed to work by the ISO 19650 part two. Uh, this is a very quick slide, but effectively we have an appointing party. We have an employer. Someone has a desire for a project and there are some suppliers that need to deliver on that. So we set some uh, exchange information requirements. We then build that out with the suppliers as a BIM execution plan. We sign a contract following a capability assessment. We then start to structure at the outset our master information delivery plan, which with one more click will arrive. And from that master information delivery plan, we start to generate the information as we defined. We submit that for review and approval. And this process continues until the project is completed. And I think each one of these data drops, as you could see it, or a review cycle, is very similar to that of the government's soft landings approach, where we don't expect a big bang data drop at the end of a project. We want to see this incremental increase of data maturity. We want to make sure checking back with the exchange information requirements, with our asset information requirements, that all of this information is being created by the responsible parties, embedded within their deliverables and submitted for frequent review by the client or the project management office. And so the infrastructure delivery is really transformed now, in my opinion, by the platform era. And so as we look at what digital delivery is, Fundamentally, it's a standardized, I think I want to emphasize the word standardized, it's a standardized methodology that we use to execute on projects. And th this is everywhere from process, technology, responsibilities. But the salient fact here is that we're looking to deliver projects uh, more efficiently and cost effectively. And so I put this little image together to try and show some levels of the complexity we have around digital delivery. And I put the word information in the middle because fundamentally that is what we're delivering in parallel with a physical asset. So we're going to deliver information and each of these cogs needs to play a role within that. That's not just a pretty picture. Those cogs all correspond with a box here in the matrix that I put together. I put this matrix together for the largest offshore wind developer in the world who are looking at how they can transform building offshore wind facilities to generate more green energy. And so we look at this as a people process technology. I think that's a given. But we also look down the left hand side. We need to enable our supply chain and our projects. We need to start to create some things. We need to be able to manage those things. And on top of that, we need to deliver. And if we continue through this life cycle, we also need to operate these things. And all of the content we curate throughout this delivery process becomes invaluable to the owner at the end. And that's where I found this definition of a platform. And I just wanted to focus to the second part of this quote that I've pulled in from HubSpot. Um, and it talks about a platform's value comes not only from its own features, but from its ability to connect external tools, teams, data and processes. And that is the magic combination. And that's something that Autodesk have based their entire cloud platform strategy around. So with that, we start to achieve this design and build team. I mentioned progressive design and build as well, where we see a better and closer interface with the owner, the capital delivery owner, and their supply chain, their builders, their designers, and any discrete suppliers or manufacturers. You know, in airports, big business around baggage systems and conveyors. We're seeing the same now in Amazon distribution facilities. But these are specialist systems that need to interface with the wider architecture and the wider building services. But what we have to create is a space in the middle where all of these parties can collaborate and coordinate. And so as we move forward, we're starting to redefine the data ownership, the responsibilities, and allowing owners on a platform like this to start to consolidate their portfolio of work. Uh, in my time at London Gatwick Airport, I had 150 projects on at any one time. They range in complexity and size. 
Um, but nonetheless, they all have to follow the same process. They still need to deliver the same data values. And we still need to make sure certainly the geometry that comes out can aggregate with the other projects and the legacy data that we hold. Otherwise, there is no way to federate the entire facility. And we're talking here about an airport campus. That problem turns tenfold when we look at a city-wide scheme because you have multiple owners, all with different views, all with different visions. And this is where we see things like the open BIM formats, the IFCs, the COBEs have a role to play within this, but it's by definition. And I think that come back to some of my earlier slides is we need to set the expectations at the start. We need to define this. There should be no surprises through the process or the implementation of our strategy once the project is in flux. Obviously, there are challenges with the design, with the construction, but we should be uh, maintaining close adherence to the process, the procedure, and the strategy if we want to reach the end efficiently. And you could look at the McLeamy curve uh, for those that are familiar with it, on the impact of making changes to these processes further down the line from that at the outset. And so we, we talk a lot about twins, digital twins, and I think we've moved on from talking about the delivery cycle. And for me, I don't think we can ignore that. You know, we've gone through a transition as an industry from CAD to BIM. Pretty much any major program now is demanding BIM deliverables, 3D deliverables with data attributed to the assets contained within. We then start to talk about, and I've spent some time talking about a platform, the aggregation of the people, the process, and the, and the design and the construction. And that falls into a common data platform or a connected data platform, as we've heard from Mark earlier today. All of a sudden, we've got all of this great data contained in one environment through linkage. And then when we have this structured data in the right environment, it allows us to start to build a digital twin. I, I added a little comment to this end point, the step three, that is, a digital twin can be created around the specified use cases. We have to consider before we start what use cases is our digital twin or smart city model going to be able to deliver and achieve. And we need to design that in from the outset. I often get asked, how can we do BIM on an already running project? And it's hard, but it can be done. But retrospective BIM is a real headache. I think we need to set off on the right foot. And if our, foot, if our journey needs to end up in a digital twin or a smart city, we need to plan that from the outset. Um, so connected data platforms at airports, I will just run through a couple of uh, flagship use cases. So Heathrow International Airport, um, I've worked with them for a number of years now. They have a common data platform. They collaborate with all of their suppliers in real time, but they have made a 20-year investment in their information management processes, procedures, and systems. So they're very mature. Um, I, I think these slides will be shared, but in 2019, we had Nigel Stroud of Heathrow and John Williams of Symmetry present uh, at AU, Autodesk University, Las Vegas. That's an hour-long session about the 20-year journey that Heathrow has taken and the level of investment and focus it has required to get this major infrastructure owner into a space they feel competent is delivering correct information management from project delivery, transferring into operations. Operations. We also have Dublin Airport. Um, you know, we've been work I've been personally working with Dublin Airport for a number of years. You'll see some similarities here. So they also have a common data platform built on the Autodesk Construction Cloud. They also collaborate with their suppliers in real time. But DAA didn't start 20 years ago on this journey. DAA have put a lot of time and effort into building up a detailed set of requirements and standards so that from a standing start, they have really leapfrogged into a very mature space. They've built this on a platform. They've looked at the precedent from other airports around the globe. 
I actually lead, chair and founded a group called Connected Airports and we have 165 international airports that meet with me every six months and we talk about our trials and tribulations in a closed environment only for airport owners. And this, this is really what's allowing some of these airports to incubate what they were doing yesterday and create a better future moving forward tomorrow. And you can see some of the fruits of their labour. You know, this is internal uh, design work within Dublin Airport. We're looking at the back of house systems. We're integrating point clouds. We're also designing baggage systems that need to thread through the internal fabric of a building. Now, doing this in 2D CAD is very challenging. Doing this in isolation with one supplier is not possible. So this requires a team sport and this requires clear definition at the front in order to get there. So to summarise, owners really do require their own common data platform if they have a vision to be a digitally led organisation. They should not be driven by their suppliers. They should collaborate with their suppliers and make sure they take ownership of that data and they are getting the data they require to operate their facility. And no one can tell them that other than themselves. We also need to align with industry recognised standards. If we're going to play a team sport, we all need to play on the same rule book. We all need to follow the same principles and processes. Um, ISO 19650 is doing a wonderful job internationally at realigning how BIM operates within organisations and how it leads collaboration strategies. And that really leads into the next point. Yeah, airports as a specific, or we could look at cities. They need to drive consistency in all of their projects. And I spoke about the wider aggregation, project to project and legacy data. So if we don't gain consistency in the models that we're creating, in the projects we're delivering, federating a campus-wide model is extremely challenging and it requires a lot of translation, possible data loss and errors can occur. Um, and then maximise the value that capital delivery data can provide during operations. You know, previously we would have seen these sit in a shelf in a locked room and never get pulled out again, and we work reactively on maintenance. We're in a new era now. We have our devices in our pocket on us at all times, and this information should be at the fingertips of those that need it as they work through the operational life cycle of the project or the facility. Uh, it's the largest phase of a project's life cycle uh, and it's where we actually use the least amount of data to date. And I think that's where the owner community is really relying on the AEC community to support them in this transformation. Um, I was inspired by a lot of the presentations today, um, specifically Paul's actually, and it really brought me into this, to this comment. The pace of change has never been this fast, yet it will never be this slow again. So the time is now, jump on and let's get moving. Thank you very much.